Inside this video right here, we're gonna talk about exactly when a patient should go BLS versus when a patient should go with ALS care. EMT care versus paramedic care. Let's break down the upgrades and the downgrades. Let's talk about it. I want to help decrease failure rates for NREMT, for EMT school, for paramedic school. Watch these videos, watch this content, and believe me, you will start to understand EMS medicine. Anybody out there that wants to serve their community as an EMT or a paramedic should be able to do that. And I'm here as a paramedic coach to help you achieve that. Hey everyone, it's Paramedic Coach back here with another video. Inside this video, we're gonna be talking about BLS to ALS, upgrades, downgrades, when someone should go BLS versus ALS. Hey, if you're new here, be sure to like and subscribe down below. This is your place, this is your haven for everything EMS on YouTube. I do daily uploads. Let's dive into it. Now, what we're gonna be talking about today is when a patient should be upgraded or downgraded. This is huge when you're a medic student. Your preceptor is gonna be looking at you saying, hey, are you taking this call or are you downgrading it to your BLS partner? So let's talk about the first thing you need to keep in mind when we're talking about BLS and ALS. So again, there are many things we wanna look at. Let's start with the first one, which is vital signs. So if I'm looking at a patient, if their vital signs are unstable, that's an ALS patient, okay? That's the whole goal of the paramedic, is to use our tools to make the patient stable so they can make it to the hospital so the hospital can do the definitive care. That's the whole point of being a paramedic, right? So that's step one. If vital signs are unstable, that's the patient I'm gonna take. The second thing is we talk about a toolbox. Is there something that I have in my medic toolbox that can help the patient now instead of them waiting for that procedure in the hospital. Let me give you an example. So, you have a patient that's dehydrated and they're nauseous, they're vomiting. Could that patient, in theory, could they go BLS? See, that's the wrong mindset. The question is, the right mindset, hey, here's my patient. Is there something in my toolbox that I can help the patient with? Now, obviously, in this scenario, the patient needs IV fluids. The patient may require Zofran, right? Nausea, vomiting. So I can make the patient feel better faster. I'm gonna make that an ALS call. Now, some people have the determination that, okay, it, if it's critical call, it's a paramedic. If it's nothing, it's the EMT. See, that I, don't, that I don't agree with. Use medics. Use this tool, and I'm gonna tell you why in a second, okay? Use this tool. Use this mindset. Is there something in my toolbox that I can help the patient with now versus them waiting? What do I mean by waiting? Let me explain. So let's talk about what do I mean by waiting? Here's what I mean. If you ever worked in a busy 911 system or a major city on an ambulance, if you haven't yet, this is why you're here to learn to train. This is what it is. The ERs are jam packed. The ERs are busy and there are life-threatening critical patients that are on the brink of dying in the ER. Those patients obviously are gonna get care faster in the ER than our patient calling of de who's dehydrated with some, with, they need Zofran, right? So think about it. If you don't treat that patient's dehydration and Zofran, it's only gonna get worse. What if the patient can't get a bed in the ER? Now they're waiting and they're more dehydrated and they're waiting. You could have helped the patient while they're waiting for that room, or while, think about it, you have to drop the patient off, give report, then the, then the tech comes and assess, the nurse will come and assess, the doctor assesses. That's a long time until definitive treatment is done. So, what, so that brings us back to remembering what the goal of the paramedic is, to treat life threats, right? So we're the first on scene, we want, if we can treat those life threats fast, great. The second thing is that I'm adding in here is use your toolbox. Use your toolbox. If there's something in your toolbox the patient needs, give it to them. Make it an ALS call. Stop thinking of BLS and ALS as critical or non-critical. Think about it as 
Is there something that the paramedic can do to help? Or, A, here's a BOS call in my definition. If all the tools in my toolbox won't help the patient, meaning that the patient doesn't need IV fluids, the patient doesn't need an EKG, the patient doesn't need, a, the patient doesn't need anything, it doesn't need any meds, right? The patient's vitals are stable. Well, what does that look like? That looks like a patient that whether I'm in the back with the patient or my EMT partner is in the back of the patient, they're gonna get the same care. That's a BLS call. That is a call I can confidently downgrade. Their vitals, their vitals are stable, right? They have a complaint or an illness that the tools in my toolbox, I wouldn't take those tools out for that patient. And the care that my EMT partner provides would be the same care that I provide in the back of the ambulance. That's a call you'll downgrade BLS, right? And the third thing I'll tell you on this video is this. Go with your gut always. Go with your gut always. If you notice, you always got to think in emergency medicine, worst case scenario over, oh, it's nothing. I'll give you an example. You go to a patient with abdominal pain. That patient is having a triple A until you assess them. Now, when you assess them, okay, I don't see any signs and symptoms of a triple A. Okay. But until, if someone has a headache, that patient is having a subarachnoid hemorrhage until I've proven otherwise, that, until I've see what's going on. If you treat every call seriously, no matter what, and just go in with an open mind instead of a closed mind, one, patients will get great care. And number two, you as a provider won't get burned. So that is why you go into every 911 call with an open mind. And when you have an open mind, you can make great decisions. When you have a closed mind, you don't make great decisions, you get burned. It starts an effect, and that's not good. I mean, that's not good. Because now the patient ends up in a bad spot because of your error. And that's not good. We don't want to do harm to a patient. Right. In summary, what to do deciding when we're going to downgrade or upgrade? Let's talk about it, okay? Number one, go with your gut. I will never be mad at an EMT that calls me to go to a call that maybe I thought wasn't that critical. That a good medic will never, ever, ever criticize you for calling a, a, a medic to a call. Never, okay? Number one. Now I'm gonna talk about a special circumstance here in a second, okay? Number two is going to be the vital signs. Unstable vitals, we might want a medic. Number two. Number three is medics. If you're on the scene, use your toolbox. What does that mean? What that means is if you have something in your toolbox that can get care to the patient faster, do it. That's the whole point. That's why we're here, right? Now, here's my quick tip to a new EMT, okay? There are times when the hospital care is going to be Getting the patient to the hospital is more critical than calling for a medic. Now, I want to talk about this because there's a lot of confusion. I want to give you a few scenarios. Let's say you're two EMTs responding to a call. And let's say you are 20 minutes away from the hospital. That's a stroke center. And you identify a stroke in your two EMTs. Is that the time to wait for a paramedic? No. But this goes back to the key thing. You should never be waiting for a paramedic. You should be moving to a paramedic always. That clears up all the BS in this industry about, do I call for a medic? I don't want to call. I don't want to feel like I'm bothering somebody. You're not bothering anybody, but you need to move off the scene. So you're, let's say you're 20 minutes away from the hospital. You show a stroke. Whoa. You can call for a medic intercept. That's fine. That's fine to call for one. Okay. But the patient needs to go to the hospital more and get the medic intercept in this case. So what I would do is I would literally, if I was an EMT in that, in that scenario, I would load and go and go to the hospital priority one. And what I would say is, hey, we have, we have a positive stroke patient. We've checked the blood sugar. They're showing positive signs of stroke. I'm calling a stroke alert. You know, paramedic, if, paramedic one, if you're able to intercept me on the direct route to hospital, 
Great. If not, this is a clear cut stroke, I'm going direct in. The other thing that I would do as well is I would talk to your local supervisor about this scenario because I believe, honestly, what, what is the medic going to do in this case? Put an IV in? That's all I'm going to do. They're going to do that in the hospital. Stroke patient needs to go to the hospital. What about trauma? Right? Same thing with a really bad, same thing with a really bad trauma, right? Let's say you're at two EMTs, you go, you, oh, I'm at a really bad trauma. Now, the thing is, this is a little different. I have IV fluids that might stabilize the patient. So again, you do not wait for me to get there. You're gonna load, go, start moving the hospital. I'll intercept with you and hop on you. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop on and we're gonna keep going. We're not gonna stop and hang on a minute, let me get set up. No, no, no. I'm gonna hop on and we're gonna keep moving. Now, if you're in a more rural area, maybe you're like 45 minutes away and that's, of course, again, we're gonna hop on and move. I'm gonna have my monitor, my bag, I'm just gonna hop on and we're gonna keep going. And then you're gonna, and then the, you know, someone's teching, update me what's going on while we're moving. We're not gonna sit on a trauma or a stroke or a potential cardiac call. We're gonna keep moving, I'm gonna move faster. That's a good intercept, okay? So now we've cleared the air on that. That is my definition of BLS to ALS. New medics, go where your gut, think about your toolbox, think about the patient's care in the hospital. How long is it really gonna be until they see a doctor? Because they're seeing you right now. Now, if you really enjoyed this content here on YouTube and you're looking for more and you wanna take your game as far as EMS to the next level, you wanna become that go-to EMT, advanced EMT or paramedic in the community that you serve, you want to become a sharp provider, join us over at the Paramedic Coach course with the NREMT Accelerator Program. This program gets you ready for these three things. Number one, getting ready for school. Number two, if you're in school. Number three, if you're studying for your NREMT boards, this is the number one program in the world for you to join. And guess what? There is no monthly fees, one-time price, you get life time access to over 160 videos and a private community where you can ask me questions while you're studying in school and again for your boards or getting ready. Everyone thank you for watching, thank you for your kind words and your comments, I'm humbled and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. I want to help decrease failure rates for NREMT, for EMT school, for paramedic school. Watch these videos, watch this content, and believe me, you will start to understand EMS medicine. Anybody out there that wants to serve their community as an EMT or a paramedic should be able to do that, and I'm here as a paramedic coach to help you achieve that.